All right, so I'm gonna be testing the valve lashes on this. And basically what that is, for those of you that don't know, it's just the, the gap or the distance in between one of these um, bucket shims that sit under these uh, camshaft, under these cam lobes here. Um, and it's just the distance between the bottom of this cam lobe and the top of this shim. Uh, that gap area would be the valve lash. So we're just checking to see. We'll, we'll be looking at each one today. I won't do all of them. This is not a video to show you um, how to check to see what it is. This is basically just me documenting what my valve lash is and what my uh, clearances are. Uh, so again, these sit inside the head uh, under these cam lobes, almost at like a 30 degree angle. So when you're checking your valve lash, you want to just go ahead and make sure that the, the valve lobes, uh, this pointed part is basically up, but facing at the same angle as these buckets sit. So almost like at a three degree angle. So you want the bottom of that lobe to be parallel with the top of this, the shim. Um, again, don't forget to use your lube. I lube up all the journals here before I start this. I also have my uh, 17 uh, millimeter socket and my wrench just so I can turn the cam gears when I need to uh, but for the intake side on the Jay-Z it's going to be um, anywhere from six thousandths of an inch to ten thousandths of an inch uh, so what I like to do is I'm going to be checking this one here first and as you can see I do have the head propped up on some pieces of wood and something under it so it won't scratch it, the reason for this is when you're checking the valves and you need to turn your cam gears, it's going to push down on the buckets like it's supposed to do, and it opens the valves. So if you just have this laying here and you try to open up the valve, it may not open. You could possibly bend it. So I like to have this up a little bit. So when turning these around, I don't have anything in the obstruction or in the way of the valves coming down. So I'll go ahead and check this first one here. Again, I know that on the intake side, the gap needs to be six thousandths of an inch uh, all the way to ten thousandths of an inch. If it falls anywhere under there, I'm good. So what I like to do is I like to start with one that's just larger than what the maximum tolerance would be. So the maximum would be ten thousandths of an inch. I'm gonna grab eleven thousandths and it should not fit if I'm okay this way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm placing it barely under here in between uh, the top of the shim and the cam gear it does not fit. So I know I'm good there. I'm gonna go down to 10 thousandths of an inch and I'm going to do the same thing. That one does not fit and I can still be good because remember it's anywhere between 6 thousandths of an inch to 10 thousandths of So I'm gonna work my way down to nine. Now that one goes in with a little bit of force. So I'm trying to look for one that basically goes in with minimal to no force to no resistance eight thousandths of an inch and that one's pretty good so i know that this one this first valve last year this clearance is going to be eight thousandths of an inch on this intake side now again it's anywhere from six thousandths of an inch to ten thousandths of an inch so i'm perfect on this first one now you always want to go ahead and write down what your um, clearances are so that you have them on a piece of paper so if you ever need to come back to see exactly what they were You'd be able to see what it was if you need to adjust for as far as thickness or get a smaller shim you'll know by how much because you already have the clearances written down so this first one is good this is eight thousandths of an inch i'm going to move on to this second lobe here uh, it's already in the position that i need it to do again i'm going to start with 11 just to make sure it's not without a spec 11 does not fit i'll go down to 10 that does not fit either so I'm gonna go down to nine that one fits I kind of do have to push it just like the other one so I'm gonna try it down one more again we're looking for one that fits right in there with minimal to no effort little resistance that one's perfect so I know this one is good also this is the same reading as the first one eight thousandths of an inch so I am well within spec on these ones it's actually basically perfect now, what you'll wanna do is you're gonna to wanna to continue this process for each one of these shims here. And the way that you'll do it, I guess these two already done, you wanna just grab your wrench or whatever you have to turn your cam shaft. And you'll wanna go ahead and just turn it until these two lobes are gonna be pointing up at that 30 degree angle, right about there. 
Now I'm ready to do these two and I'll check the clearances on these two, write my readings down, what I get, and then I'll go ahead and just continue this whole thing here until I'm finished with the intake side, flip it around and I'll do the exact same thing on the exhaust side uh, before I get ready to drop this into the car. So that's basically it. Just checking the valve lashes on uh, my 1JZ head.